Hello friends and welcome to a lecture to a lecture on numerical computation methods. Uh, today we will learn how to solve a first order differential equation using SymPy. Now SymPy is a very powerful library to do symbolic computation so it gives you analytical solutions and of course if you want to view the solution graphically also this is possible. It has many advantages over uh, scipy dot integrate that is od int function that you usually have i'm not saying that od int function which is there in python is not useful it is useful if you want to have a quick view of your solution but if you want to have an analytical solution symbolically you have to use sympy so let's get ahead with it so first what we do is we import sympy Okay, that being done, we define our variable as x. So, and also we define y as function y x. So, that's small x. So, oh, I forgot to close the bracket. No, in fact, the bracket will be open and here the bracket will close. There we are. So, variable is defined, of course, in SymPy. So, what we have to do is from SymPy, import star. So, we have to import all the functions. And then, of course, as you can see here, it has imported all the functions. So the function variable and the function f, they have been imported now. So this is an important line of code after you import SymPy. Now, how do you write the differential equation symbolically? So we first define a variable. First order differential equation is equal to y dot diff. And we write x. So let's see what's the output of this f o d e. Now this gives you d y x by d x. That is, this gives you the differential of y, which is a function of x with respect to x. So now let's complete writing this entire function here. So this is nothing but x star y diff x that is y dy by dx plus 2y plus 2 star y and what we do further here is we write e q and we put this entire thing in the bracket right now this part is nothing but the left hand side of the expression that we have the left hand side of the expression that we have and the right hand side is written by putting a comma so we write x cube minus x right and as you can see here exactly the way we have it here symbolically this has been represented here or f o d e symbolically has the function now, what we want to do is we just want to find out what's the solution of this function. Now, that's pretty easy. So, we write SOLM is equal to D solve. And then we write the function or the variable for which we want the solution. That is F O D E. And what is the function for which we want the solution? Okay. Variable for which we want the solution. So, okay, it's not callable here. We have to just put here y and it's done. Now, let's have a look at the solution. <coughs> As we can see here, c1 by x square plus x cube by 5 minus x by 3. So, that is c1 x square minus 1 by 3x minus 1 by 3x and 1 by 5 x cube. So, we have the function here, right? was very simple and what if we want to put the initial values or the initial conditions and solve this differential equation so what we do here is just insert a cell above and start it off 
so we write initial conditions so is equal to and we store it in a dictionary so in the dictionary we have y substitute that is sub is short for substitute at x 1 so the value of y at x is equal to 1 is 1 right and then what we do here is we write ICS which is short for initial conditions and we write initial conditions right and okay we put s here which was not required yes okay let me cancel it off backspace and run it initial condition initial condition is defined so we write this and we again do this so let's do it once again let's run the entire kernel okay so it says initial condition okay i missed an i here well a lots of typo typographical errors and let's have a look at the solution now and there we have the solution so we have the solution when it is defined that at y is 1 at x is equal to 1 right now is it really that way okay now most of us would be wondering okay this does it quite efficiently and hey it's great but does it do the right thing so what we can do here is we can write plot to have a visual representation of a solution and then we can take the solution dot rhs that is the right hand side of the solution okay for various values of x here the right hand side can be plotted right and we press enter now now it gives us the visual representation of a solution okay now at x is equal to 1 we have y is equal to 1 here now that's a visual representation how do we check that at x is equal to 1 we have y is equal to 1 so what we can do is write soln dot rhs and then after words write substitute subs short for substitute at x is equal to 1 so we will get the value of the rhs and there we have we have it as 1 now what if you are interested only in the positive part of the solution which is between 0 to 10 if we want to view only that part of the solution here so what we can do here is just add in this x lem that is the domain of the function here which is being entered at a, as a tuple now the first value is of course the lower limit of the domain and the upper limit of the domain is of course 10 and let's press enter and we can see the nature of the curve here between 0 to 10 here okay x i have to write l i m i had written at n m and there we have the curve here now between 0 to 10 what is the behavior of the curve okay so what if i want to plot it in a much more better way where you know i can see legends grids and everything i can you know have grids read the points okay for that what you have to do is you have to plot it in matplotlib for that what you will have to do first is you will have to import numpy and you have to import mat mat plot lib dot pi plot as plt having imported these libraries now let us first take the range, domain values of the function so we have x val right which is going to represent our domain and we write np dot lin space and then we write 0 to 10 which is our domain value and we take 100 points in between this right now 
okay so we write import numpy as np and this will run now so now let's see what is the value of x x val okay so we get equally spaced 100 values between 0 to 10 now to find the value of the function at these values what we have to do is we have to lambdify the function so we write plot function is equal to l a m b d i f y lambdify then s o l n you have to lambdify it so you write the variable which is going to go in the variable with respect to which it is going to get lambdified then we write s o l n dot r h s which is the right hand side of the solution that we have and then we write numpy so this creates the function as a numpy array now what do we get what's the advantage of this we write plot f u n c and then if we put the array of array of x values we get the lambdified values of y now remember one thing that very close to zero this function is not defined and this is the error that it has given so it would be wise to start it from 0 0.5 and let's see what do we get do we get the error yeah it does give an error because that's fairly close so let us give it as one and there we are so it should no longer give us the error why because we had defined that at x is equal to one we had defined this as y is equal to one so this error will not creep in there okay now we have the values so we have the value from the range one to ten sorry not the range the domain one to ten and we have the range of the values for the function now we can plot it using matplotlib so it gives a beautiful plot of course so we write plt dot plot plot x val comma plot plot function and then the values of x here okay so well we have to put not x but x val and it will do its job yes now the advantage of course in plotting in matplotlib as i had said we can draw grids so we can write plt dot grid grid and it gives you a grid and we can put a name so we can write plt dot x label and then we can write here okay first the spelling of the label has to be right and then what do we do is we write here x and let's see what do we get we get x here and similarly if you want to name the y-axis we can write plt dot y label and we can write here can we write the function so our function is simply okay so we simply represent it as plot plot f-u-n-c right so as we can see here now it hurts what is this the y-axis has been named the x-axis has been named and of course there is a lot of embellishments that you can do right now what we can see here is that it is much more smoother than this plot now the reason of course is that we have taken much more equally spaced finely equally spaced points in between our entire domain so the plot of course here comes out to be much more smoother than the plot that is available or the plot function that is available in SimPy. So that was all guys about how to solve a first order differential equation using SimPy. I know this is a pretty exciting stuff and you like it and you'll go ahead and use SimPy for all your work. If you like my lecture, do subscribe my channel 
and send the link of this lecture to all your friends who would be interested in using SimPy. And I'll be waiting for your comments. If you want any more lectures using symbolic mathematics or which, you know, gives you analytical solution using Python, symbolic mathematics, do let me know in the comments. I'll put it. Okay, friends, have a good time. Have a great day. Goodbye.